Shohei anime fans. The series name is What If Naruto and Karinai Secretly Dating, so let's start the series. Come on Karinai. Don't be such a stick in the mud. A dark violet hair woman with brown pupil-less eyes called to her companion. A woman with a long mane of black hair and red eyes that have a ring of darker red closer to her pupil, the women were an odd pair, the younger, brown-eyed girl wearing a form-fitting outfit of a dark gray material covered in chain mail, a tan trench coat with a lavender lining, an orange skirt that didn't make it to mid-thigh, shin guards over her blue sandals, and a forehead protector with a stylized leaf with a swirl in the middle on her head that was used to help hold her hair back in a spiky ponytail, her companion. The black-haired woman was much more modest in her dress, wearing a deep, rich red outfit with no sleeves underneath a standard military outfit of the village the pair lived in and a dark leaf green flak jacket with a red spiral on the back. Anko, I have no intention in losing my shirt in another of your get-quick-rich schemes, Karinai said in an exasperated fashion to her younger friend, annoyed at the memory of the last time she had helped Anko out with one of her plans. Whatcha talking about cuckoo? Losing your shirt got Asuma then to look at you, right? Anko replied with a leer and smirk, at least, bits of you got looked at, bits I didn't want him seeing yet, Karinai shot back quickly, a blush on her cheeks, Anko's smirk grew as she decided to needle Karinai for that comment, so you do like him? Ha, I knew it, Karinai frowned at the childish antics of her friend and sighed, maybe I do, but I am not going out with him after that little stunt you pulled, it should be two dates before seeing what my balls actually look like, at minimum. Anko just chuckled and hip-bumped Karinai, I'm sure, but it's not like he'd only go for you for your body, snickering Anko concluded her statement with, Daddy Hokage would make sure of it to keep a few pictures from becoming public. Karinai looked at Anko with a raised eye, wondering why she didn't just sell those pictures to the Hokage to get money, but just mentally shrugged, long giving up on understanding her friend's mind, anyways. What is this plan of yours? It better be a good one because we know how often they fail. Anko nodded her head, acknowledging that her plans didn't always follow through right, at least my plans usually turn out alright, besides, this is different. Karinai cut in quickly, silencing Anko, if it involves selling snake oil medicines again, using me as a test subject, then you can go right ahead. Different. Anko yelled, before getting back to a conversational tone, grinning at remembering all the cream she got to rub on Karinai's body, even if no one was buying anything, a success in her book. All things considering, look, you know how I am good at poker, right? I know you are good at poking me, Karinai grumbled. Okay, that may be true, but I'm talking about the card game, Anko said. I used to be good at scamming lunch money out of the other kids back in the academy, look. There's this high stakes poker game every week down at that one barbecue place, the small one the Akimichi clan owns, half the council attend and so does the Hokage, there's a minimum stake of a million Ryu. A million. Karina yelped, stopping in her tracks, are you out of your mind, I don't have a million Ryu, and even if I did, I wouldn't risk it on your poker skills, look, you've got 200,000 off that last mission, right? Anko said, plus the 250 you set aside for a rainy day, and I've got 550,000 I haven't managed to squander yet, that's a million, we go in, stake that, if it all goes wrong then I bet my coat, take the next pot for all I can while they're drooling and we quit? Give me one reason that I should go along with a crazy plan like that, Karina said, preferably a reason that won't leave us in the bad books of the wives of all the clan heads once they find out. Anko raised one eyebrow and then moved closer to whisper into Karina's ear, the chunin froze, after a moment, a trail of drool began to leak from the side of her mouth. Ha, Anko said smugly, let's go get our steak out of the bank, Karina. She declaimed and set off, towing the still glassy-eyed Karina behind her. Several hours later a blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy with three lines on both his cheeks would be seen running in a dirty, white shirt and shorts that were too large for him held up by some rope and was frayed on the leg openings. This was a fairly common sight for this particular six-year-old to be seen running from a mob of villages, especially on the poor kid's birthday, the military police, or a group of masked ninja known as ANBU. The mobs chased after him in hatred that the child did not understand while the police and ANBU chased him for his pranks and was more understandable to the child. Today, the officers, in civilian attire, were chasing the brat known as Naruto Uzumaki for his latest prank. The officers did not want to know how much water the brat drank to get that many uniforms wet and they especially did not want to know what he ate to get such a distinct smell. What the officers did want to know was what they'd get to do to the little prankster once they caught him. 
As luck would have it, the crowds in the market were dying down at this time, allowing for the offices to spot the kid as he was catching up to the two lady ninjas we listened in on earlier. There he is. What? There. Get him. I am going to kill that brat when we get our hands on him. The three civilian garbed officers were not bothering with stealth, using rage to try and capture the blonde menace, anything involving little Naruto always seemed to anger certain people. Eep. Naruto freaked and turned down the alleyway the two Kunoichi had gone down not long before, running as fast as his little legs could carry him. Naruto barely made it through the open door the two women entered before being grabbed. Where do you think you are going? The ANBU standing guard at the door said in an authoritative voice, missing the short kid that slipped by him. Look, we're chasing the one officer started. Nope, private council meeting, the ANBU cut them off, not even looking up. We're with the military police. Protested a second member of the military police, made up of one clan, the Uchiha. Ha, huh, so why no uniforms? Asked the ANBU. The three Uchiha exchanged glances, their boss would not be happy if they advertised exactly how the brat had pranked them this time, look. Denied. Fugaku Uchiha is in there, he's our clan head, we just need to tell him. Unless it's about an imminent invasion by at least a hundred S-class Nin, forget it, the ANBU said, private meeting, if you were really with the military police, you'd know that. Now go away or I'll hand you over to Ibiki to find out why you really want to sneak into a private council meeting, the ANBU then closed the door on the faces of the three. The leader of the village turned in an attempt to examine the child in his robes. Finding it rather difficult with the child constantly turning with him so that his backside was towards the little one so the child was behind the Hokage, the most powerful man in the village side. Recognizing that this was Naruto trying to be stealthy and hide. Naruto, why are you here? The old man asked the child. Um, Naruto stalled a bit, knowing the old man, the man he thought of as a grandfather, did not always appreciate the humor or justice in his pranks, that normally wouldn't hinder his talking about his pranks. Except that there were a bunch of other old men that Naruto recognized, in his six-year-old mind, as being meanies and sourpusses who never appreciated a good prank, following you. Naruto answered cheerfully. Saratobi sighed inwardly, it's a little late, Naruto, shouldn't you go home before the caretakers at the orphanage start to worry about you? Naruto blinked, oh, they never worry about me, old man. But what are you doing here? Yo, Hokage. Called Enko from the table, are you gonna talk to your mascot all day or can we start the game? It's a game. Naruto shouted in amazement, old man, I never knew you could play games too. You always said you were too busy. Before anyone thought to stop him, he darted over to the table and stood on a chair to look at the table, it was a large dining table usually used for the restaurant customers who came in large parties, but bought by Choza Akimichi's grandfather specifically for the weekly poker games that had been running here for almost as long as Kanoha had been a going concern. Legend had it that the first Hokage had lost the post of Hokage to his brother at the table only to win it back the same night and appoint his brother as his successor the next morning. Naruto stared at the long wooden surface, now covered with green cloth and at the stacks of cards and poker chips heaped up at in front of a large, wide man named Choza, wow. What sort of game is it? It is a grown-up game, Naruto, the third Hokage answered from behind the boy, and there are very strict rules on who can play. Ah, but it looks like fun, Naruto pouted, what do I need to do to play? It's the money, brat, Anko answered in her normal, forward, manner, you have to lay down one million Ryu if you are going to play this game, she pointed towards Chuza, and the strongbox next to him, who was exchanging stacks of money for chips as people paid in to play. A million. Naruto exclaimed before taking a moment to think, looking at the Hokage he asked, is that a lot? The Hokage smiled down at Naruto, having problems seeing how anyone could hate such a lovable, innocent child, yes, it is, maybe when you are older. Naruto pouted again and rummaged in his pocket, pulling out a bloated, Worn wallet meant to look like a frog, opening the wallet up and letting his money spill out, I got lots of money in Gama. Naruto said happily, hugging his wallet, is this enough? Kurinai went wide-eyed and nearly choked at seeing how much money the kid had on him, sure, she could tell it wasn't a million, but how could a child have so much money with them? The Hokage frowned at the sight of the money and quickly ran his hand through it, counting it up and finding it to be about how much Naruto should have had from his allowance from the last few years. Did the kid not spend any of it? Choza chuckled suddenly, what the hell, fellows, he said, nodding to Shikaku, a man with two scars on the right side of his face and his dark hair pulled back in a ponytail, 
and Inoichi, a blonde-haired, teal-eyed man, why not let him play? You mean it? Naruto exclaimed, really? Sure Chosa grinned, toothily, it's your money so I guess you can do what you want with it, just come over here with it and I'll count you out some chips to play with he saw Hayashi Hyuga, a man with white, featureless eyes, long black hair, and a stern face, nod slightly in understanding and Fugaku Uchiha, a rather plain looking, but serious black hair and eyed man, smile thinly as he caught on. He also saw the Hokage's eyes narrow and made a point of counting out Naruto's chips with more care than usual, giving the kid the fourth Hokage sealed a demon fox inside exact value for his money and the Hokage no reason to complain. Naruto sat down to the left of the Hokage, which placed him next to Anko as well. Kurinai sitting a little away from the table to show that she was not playing herself while questioning why she got dragged into this. And the old man began to quickly explain the rules of the game to the little boy. The first few hands moved slowly with small pots as everyone waited for the last few to arrive and give Naruto time to get used to the rules without losing too many chips. The only surprise that happened was a crippled, bandaged old man with dark gray hair and a cross-shaped scar on his chin named Danzo coming in, Danzo wasn't a regular. But after a few skeptical looks at Naruto and Choza, Danzo took a seat and joined in on the game. The pots began to rise towards their usual level, 10,000 riot chips moving across the table, the play was fierce today and the Hokage had to look to his own cards. With only occasional attention to Naruto, no one had had any spectacular hands yet, nothing better than a pair or a three winning any hands. There was a moment's excitement when Hayashi and Naruto spent almost a minute staring at each other, gauging to their confidence in their hand, Hayashi folded on his pair of threes, which was a pity because Naruto was completely wrong about a five, seven, eight, ten, and knave being worth anything when they were mixed hearts and spades. Hayashi made a mental note not to rely on the brat's confidence in his cards when he didn't actually know what the cards were worth, and Naruto raked in the biggest pot so far. Even with a big win, Naruto didn't seem to be doing so well with what looked to be the same amount he started with, the Hokage, Hiruzen Sarutobi, gave the boy a worried look, Naruto. Are you sure you want to keep playing? After all, you just had a big win. No way. Naruto yelled happily, I want to win much bigger than that. Seeing the smiling faces of the other players, Naruto misinterpreted the meaning to being they were happy for him. Unknown to the others, Naruto had carelessly knocked some of his chips onto the floor and his lap. It wasn't really fair to blame it on him since he was about two feet shorter than the next shortest player and even with sitting on the cushions provided for him. He had a hard time reaching and accidentally let chips fall, if all his chips were stacked properly, everyone would see he was actually up by a fair amount, enough to be only a few grand short of the usual minimum stake. Anko, unfortunately, was not doing anywhere near as well, she was down by about half of her initial stakes and Karinai was getting nervous and slightly twitchy, we need a big pot. Then plan B and get out of here, Anko thought to herself as she looked at her hand for the next game, using all her ninja skills at keeping a straight face, Enko managed to avoid grinning like a lunatic, 4, 5, 6, and 7 of diamond were all looking up at her with a 2 of spades, this had the potential to be the best hand yet, all Enko needed was a 3, 8, or another diamond and this hand would surely be hers. Choza opened high, having been pushing the pots higher since Danzo arrived, with two further raises before the hand got to Enko, raising again, Enko pushed a third of the remaining chips in. Most of the table was still in when it came time to discard and get a new card with most of the players tossing away one or two cards. Anko tossed the two of spades away and bit her tongue lightly to keep from maniacal laughter when she saw she got a queen of diamonds, giving her a flush. It was never a good idea to laugh maniacally when your boss was two seats to your right and most of the powerful men and women in the village sitting around the table, although, Anko was of the firm opinion laughing maniacally around children was just fine. Several players began to fold, narrowing the field down, Danzo took a look at his cards, having drawn two and raised a noichi in a weapon smith both called while the Hokage folded, Naruto, after a moment of squinting at his cards, raised, Kurinai grit her teeth as Anko pushed the rest of her their chips in in order to match the current bet, this had better be good, Anko. Kurinai mentally screamed at the girl while mentally asking herself again why she was friends with Anko, it's so warm in here, Anko said standing up to remove her coat, hanging it over her chair before sitting again. Her upper body covered only in her form-fitting top that the careful eye would be able to see that Anko was not wearing a bra as the tip of her nipples were clearly hard. The temperature certainly seemed to be rising for the men in the room as several faces went noticeably red. Hey, hey, Naruto said happily to Anko, isn't this fun? Oh yes, 
Karinai replied tightly, fun. At the end of this round of bets only six players remained in play, Choza looked at his cards again, looked at the others still in and folded, not feeling his hand was good enough. Danzo after a quick check of his cards raised again, a smirk on his lips at Anko, Inoichi folded, followed quickly by the weapon smith. Naruto smiled sweetly at Karinai as he pushed in the last of his chips on the table to the pot in order to call. All eyes went to Anko and the empty spot in front of her as Karinai bit her lip in nerves. Alright, Anko said in a carefree manner, I'll throw in me and Karinai as personal servants to the winner. Karinai gulped and went pale at that. Danzo looked at the pair with a leer, that is acceptable, he decided, Uzumaki. Sarutobi coughed to get attention, I hardly. It is up to those who are still playing to agree on what is acceptable, Danzo chided the Hokage, the Hokage sighed and looked to Naruto. The boy eyed the two women with a puzzled expression, you know, Naruto said, servant means they work for me, right? Between their missions, the third Hokage insisted, correct Danzo? Oh, certainly, the old cripple agreed. Karinai's fingers tightened on Enko's shoulder, you better win, Karinai whispered into Enko's ear. Okay, so are we done betting? Naruto asked. I believe so, Danzo said, I believe you should begin, Ms. Mitarashi, surely the inclusion of you two must count as a form of a raise. Enko shrugged and smirked in a smug manner as she laid her cards out one at a time, flush of diamonds, she said confidentially, Queen High. Danzo gave her a long smile that was definitely a leer and started laying down spade after spade, his fifth card was the king, flush of spades, he said, King High. Karinai's hands moved towards Anko's neck in a slow attempt to strangle her, now, now, ms, yuhi, Danzo smirked, no damaging the merchandise. Naruto turned to the Hokage, old man, how does a pair of threes count against that? It doesn't beat it, Sarutobi said with a sigh, it saddened his heart to see a child be cleaned out like that, especially one so close to his heart. What if I had two pairs of three? Naruto innocently asked, honestly not knowing. The entire room fell silent at that question as Naruto revealed his hand, a wild-haired woman with red markings under her eyes that was idly playing with her chips dropped the one in her hand. The sound of it hitting the ground broke the spell of silence Naruto's announcement created. Four threes stared back at the assembled players and Danzo's hands began to visibly shake before he took a hold of himself, well, congratulations, young man, he said somewhat grudgingly. It would seem that you have a pair of matched pet kunoichi. Pets. Enko yelled in anger, I said nothing about being pets. Servants was the term used, the Hokage agreed, but, without any other terms specified, I suppose it will be for however long Naruto wants you. Don't worry new sister, Naruto reassured the trembling Kurinai, I'll look after you. Enko shrugged, figuring that the brat wasn't the worst master she could have, the jiggle her balls made caused nearly two dozen eyes to focus on the slight bounce and sway, fine, whatever, we're his slaves. I'll get some chains and collars for us later, the Hokage collapsed onto the floor in surprise, his eyes glazing over at the mental image of his subordinates in such an outfit. Enko. You will do no such thing. Karina yelped out, grabbing her fellow slave by the front of her chainmail suit. Enko chose to fight back and the two bickering kunoichi rolled underneath the table with Naruto yelling out words of encouragement to both of his new big sisters in the cat fight. The distraction for the men was great until Choza suggested a break from play to let tempers cool and to get drinks, with all the commotion. It was unsurprising that the Hokage missed seeing the Inoshikacho trio whispering amongst themselves. After the commotion settled down and the players were mostly back to sitting around the table again Danzo decided to question Naruto's two kunoichi servants. I trust that the two of you have settled your differences. Yeah, Anko drawled out, rolling her eyes while putting a handful of chips onto the table, no slave gear, just appropriate dress for servants who expect to be seen in public, right, Karinai? Uh, right, Karinai said, eyeing the chips, Anko, where did you get those chips? They were on the floor, Anko answered, giving her chest the attention of several eyes as she shrugged again, must have dropped them when I took my coat off. Naruto blinked and looked at Anko, oh, you dropped some too, new sister. I found all these under my chair, Naruto said, pointing to the stacks in front of him that caused a few choked exclamations as the others noticed that Naruto clearly had the largest pile at the table. Wait, Inoichi interrupted, eyes still wide at seeing Naruto's stack, Anko, you can't keep playing now. Anko stared at him, a look of disbelief on her face, what the fuck are you talking you old bastard? We ain't broke yet. Danzo cleared his throat, Inoichi is correct, house rules say that only one member of any clan can play at a given time, to prevent abuse of authority. 
obvious military ranks don't count for that otherwise the Hokage could bet any of us, or Fugaku could use some he was cut off by a bark from under the table and some had to restrain her canine companion. Kuramaru, from taking a chunk out of the aged and retired veteran for even suggesting the possibility, but you are the Dem Choza started to finish for Danzo before catching the Hokage's glare and quickly edited his word choice, eh, now that you are the kid's toys, for you to play could give him an advantage since your honor bound to do whatever he tells you, that is total bullshit. Anko yelled, standing up to slam her fist on the table, you think. Saratobi coughed, interrupting Anko's rant, Anko, please, they do have a point and those really are the house rules, perhaps the two of you would like to take seats behind Naruto, and could you get him a glass of milk to drink while you calm down? Don't look at me like that, Naruto, you're too young for anything alcoholic. Jeez, never thought I'd be giving a brat milk, Anko muttered getting up and heading to the kitchen to get her new master some milk. Of course, Danzo said smoothly, that raises the question of whether it would be possible for us to win back Kurinai and Anko's freedom. If his expression when he looked at Kurinai was supposed to be charming then it failed, since Naruto was only one who didn't recognize it as a leer. He might have if he hadn't been wondering why the funny bandaged man thought that he'd bet away his new sisters. Freedom. Kurinai snorted, I'm sure that that's what you were thinking of, look all you want, but all you'll see is this, she finished. Standing and heading for the kitchen to find out what was keeping Anko and the milk for Master Naruto, the Chunin made a point of rolling her hips as she walked, to remind Danzo of what he'd failed to get. A motion that all the men at the table watched with interest and, in a few cases, with frustration. I, uh, think that Anko and Karina's situation, in regards to Naruto is, um, a personal one, the Hokage nervously said. Perhaps, more like a clan one, Hayashi suggested, taking a sip from his cup of rice wine, he is technically the head of the Uzumaki clan. Yes yes, that is reasonable, Saratobi mumbled out, hey, uh, Kurina you aren't mad, are you? Anko asked with a nervous laugh, mad? Why would I be mad? Kurina asked dangerously, you only sold us into slavery. Yeah, well, Anko said with a shrug, at least it is only with the brat, how much trouble can he be, he's six or something, not like that old fossil Danzo or Choza, he was definitely giving us the eye. Looked like he wanted to eat us up and you know what they say about a kimichi. Kurinai snorted as she opened the milk and began to pour it into a glass she found, Enko, that cannibalism rumor is just that a rumor, but I suppose you are right, besides the Hokage. The kid is probably the best one that could have won us, he seems like any other kid other than his little resident. Yeah, Enko said, rolling her eyes, like he's the only one with some damn seal on him. Let's just make sure that he doesn't lose, we could still wind up with one of the old goats if he does. And I am sure you have a wonderful plan for that, Karinai said in a very sarcastic tone, ignoring how well your law EP. Anko. Karinai yelped at feeling Anko grope her well-toned ass, whirling around, Karinai found herself pinned to the refrigerator, the slightly shorter girl pressing up against her. Trust my feminine wiles, Anko said cheerfully, taking the glass from her friend's hand and taking it to the table for their new master. Once the Kunoichi pair returned, Kurinai having wide eyes as if something shocked her more than the last hand Enko lost, the game resumed. Play was far more conservative after the last hand and Naruto lost a bit more than he won, considering the small size of the bets. His pile of chips was not depleted by too much and was still far ahead of where he began the game. Some of the losses came from mistakes Naruto made, twice folding on what was likely to be winning hands. Then the Hokage noticed a slight nod from Choza as he checked his newly dealt hand, the Hokage doubted it was a coincidence that Inoichi, the man opening the betting, bet high or that Shikaka not only checked that bet, but raised the stakes higher. Naruto barely looked at his hand and pushed a million Ryo into the pot, betting rather recklessly, Choza hesitated, double-checking his hand, he hadn't been winning much that night, but steeled his nerves and pushed half his remaining chips into the pot to continue. Cards were discarded and dealt to those still in and the Hokage felt a chill in his spine at seeing Naruto casually toss away four cards. Choza nearly choked on his tongue trying to avoid laughing at the thought of the boy raising despite having nothing in his hand. Choza smiled to himself at seeing a pair of kings in his hand next to the three jacks he had kept, this hand was surely in the bag for him. Inoichi and Shikaku raised again, more conservatively this time around, after spotting the smile and slight nod from Choza and were glad for the agreement the three had. Kuroda, the weapon smith, hesitated for a moment before pulling out and placing the deed for his shop into the pile on the table as security for the chips he didn't have, the Hokage folded. 
disappointed that he failed to get the flush or straight he was hoping might win him the hand, everyone turned to look at Naruto as he stood up in his chair and leaned forward precariously. Only Kurinai's quick action at grabbing the back of his shirt keeping the boy from falling face down onto the table. Naruto surprised everyone by pushing forward all his chips before sitting back down with a happy smile, proud of himself. Careful Naruto, that is a big bet, the Hokage warned, only getting a grin in reply while the two Kunoichis Naruto now owned looked at each other nervously. Choza paled at seeing that bet, unable to match it with the chips he had on the table, the odds of anyone beating a full house was a long shot. It was the best hand of the night other than Naruto's earlier four of a kind, but that wouldn't matter if he couldn't match the bet, thinking quickly. Choza pulled out his wallet and took out a stack of deeds he had been going over earlier, all were for spots in the market for food stalls that the Akimichi rented out, all prime locations in the market. Choza had simply put them into his wallet instead of going home and putting them away and coming back for the poker game, B should make up the difference, Choza offered, pushing in all his chips. The Hokage stood up and looked over the deeds before looking at each of the players, Inoichi and Shikaku simply folded while Kuroda gave a sharp, decisive nod that Naruto imitated. Full house, Choza said with a mixture of relief and smugness, Inoichi and Shikaku smiled as well, happy to push the pot to such heights for their friend. Naruto grinned right back, this beats that, right? He said, laying down two queens and a joker followed shortly by a pair of threes. There was a chuckle from Kuroda that quickly developed into a full belly laugh that was not at Naruto's expense, well played youngster, that is indeed a winning hand alright as is this, he said laying down his pair of threes, a pair of queens, and the other joker. Exactly equal hands, Fugaku whispered with a low whistle, never seen that happen. The brat loses, Choza snapped irritably, look at the sweets, if the cards are the same value, then the suit decides. Don't split hairs, Kuroda said with a dismissive wave, call it even, he began to split the pot, taking his deed back and half the chips while pushing the rest of the deeds and chips over to Naruto. The Hokage smiled, knowing Naruto won more than money and property this round, he won recognition as a fellow person and human, but the game could go on for a long time and the stakes just kept getting higher. Besides Choza, the sweet check is only done for flushes of equal value since flushes are the only hand that has only a single sweet, the Hokage told the saddened Akimichi. Huh, what are these? Naruto asked, looking at the pieces of rolled up paper he had gotten the last round. Title to property, Kurinai said, taking the deeds from Naruto to look through them, whoever owns these papers owns the building or land that they describe, so that means that as long as you have them. You own, Kurinai paused with a slight frown as she leafed through them, 17 spaces in Kanoha Market, whoever runs the stalls in those spaces has to pay you for permission to have their stall there. Naruto's eyes widened and a large smile formed on his lips, wow. Could I give one to old man Tuchi? He's always saying he wished he could move Ichirakas to the market and sell ramen to the people there. He'd be so happy if he could do that. Kurinai shrugged, maybe. It depends on the exact agreement that you have with the stalls that are there. Sort it out later kid, Kuroda advised, we're here to play cards, not talk business, hell, you might not even still have the stalls when the sun comes up, so why worry, right? Naruto declared loudly, deal me some cards then, he told Choza, who glared and passed the cards to the civilian to his left. I'm sitting this hand out, the big jonin said, standing up, got to go get some more money to keep playing with, Shikaku and Inoichi stood up as well, indicating they were in the same position and left the table with their teammate. The cards were dealt and Naruto held up his hand for examination, incidentally letting Kurinai and Enko get a look at what he had, as trained Kunoichi. The pair were too good at masking their emotions to let their disappointment at Naruto having nothing in his hand cross their faces. Sarutobi coughed as the betting reached him, I don't think I want to run out of drink money, he said, eyeing his own, modest heap of chips. So how much would you say that permission for a child to enter the academy a year early was worth? Fugaku eyed him warily, I thought you didn't want any more prodigies appearing like Itachi did? He asked carefully, so he can go as screwy as Mato or that Hitaki kid? Some snorted, the fourth didn't approve of children as young as three or four being entered, Saratobi said in a firm voice, after seeing the effects on one of his own students, while well, I agree with him but I will stretch the point by a year, that is, if anyone wins this slip off of me, he said, jotting down a promise to that effect on a slip of paper. Write another and put both into the pot for your call, Kuroda suggested, I think there are quite a few kids out there who could benefit from starting a little early. Not all of us give out kanai as toys, some grunted, 
but made no further protest as the two slips were pushed forwards and into the pot. Naruto absently put his own chips in without raising and discarded two cards at random, he didn't get anything worthwhile though and folded rather than keep betting. Some ended up winning and looked at the papers irritably, what the hell am I supposed to do with these? She muttered, having no intentions of letting her son enter early, you could give them to me, Naruto chirped cheerfully, hell no kid, some snorted, you want them, you gotta win them. Anko gave the kid a worried look as Inoichi and Shikaku came back to the table, if his luck was running out then she'd be back in hot water, not that she'd never been there before, and taking Karinai with her. A much bigger concern, somehow, she doubted the kid would stop wagering just because he wasn't doing so well. We've put up some property up against an advance from the bank, Inoichi announced, stacking chips in front of himself, we'll buy them back with the chips before we cash up whatever is left, alright? Chuzas put our names and the value in chips down. No problem, Kuroda shrugged and getting up, I'll go bank this then, he said, holding up his shop's deed. I think I better get out of this game, the Hokage admitted, picking up his chips, the luck is just against me tonight, I'll mine the bank for Choza so he can concentrate on his game. As the Hokage walked past them, Kurinai moved aside to give him space, brushing up against Anko, who moved in closer and began to whisper a plan to keep Naruto from running through all his chips if he went onto a losing streak. Then she saw the fascinated gaze of some of the male players and instead simply whispered, play along with this, before beginning to nuzzle Karinai's ear. An anko oh, Karinai tried to protest, her yelp turning into a soft moan. Are you okay? Naruto asked, half turning. W we're fine, Karinai said, a soft moan in her voice, snaking an arm around Anko's waist to pull her in close to play along with the plan, you enjoy the GA aim. Right? Naruto said with a grin as he plumped himself onto his cushions, I'm going to win everything. Normally, that statement would have elicited derision from the other players, but most of the men were too busy fixing their pants to comment, needless to say. They were having difficulty focusing on the game and the next hand, where Tsum bet one of the slips, went to the Hokage's former teammate Koharu, who looked at it, shook her head and dropped it into her winning so far, seeing no need for it. I'm going to win the next one. Naruto declared confidently and beckoned for Chuza to deal, the deal was sloppy, probably due to Anko nuzzling at the corner of Karinai's jaw, and Sung laughed out loud when Danzo dropped his cards face up and clutched at his nose, which was bleeding profusely, his eyes glazing slightly, the old crippled ninja stalked out of the room, not even bothering to pick up the handful of chips remaining to him, Sung bet the other permission slip and watched as Naruto managed to win the hand with a pair of tens. I would advise against using that, Sung said in a reserved tone as Naruto clutched the slip of paper, kids who start early tend to go a bit crazy, I would never allow any of mine start at the academy before they were 8, I am already a bit crazy, Naruto retorted, one of those masked people, uh, and by, um boo, Anko corrected before placing a hand onto Karinai's chest, the other on her ass, and her teeth on her jaw, right below Karinai's ear, right, um boo, Naruto said with a smile and nod, one of them told me I was a crazy last time they found me putting glue on the doorsteps of the police building. That was you, Fugaku said with a growl as he tore his eyes from Enko and Karinai, what was that in aid of? Ah, Naruto picked his nose contemplatively, feeling a rather large buggar sticking there, well, the police always chase me when I prank someone, so I thought that if their feet were glued to the ground then they wouldn't be able to. Karinai whimpered slightly as Enko's hand began to slit up the inside of her skirt, Hamura, sitting next to Koharu, fell backwards out of his chair into perverted bliss, would you mind stopping that? Koharu asked the pair, getting slightly irritable, it's not that I mind you taking advantage of this bunch of perverted men, but some of them aren't young enough to keep up anymore, huh, what ash? What do you mean old lady? Naruto asked, are my new sisters doing something naughty? Some started snickering out loud, earning glares from most of the men at the table, you know, brat, you are okay, she said with a smirk, damned if I know how, but looks like you're turning out okay despite everything, still, maybe you'd better take those girls of yours in hand, Naruto looked confused, what do you mean? He asked, curious, well, you could sit on one of them, she suggested with a grin that was almost, but not quite, feral, that'll split them up and make them concentrate on not causing you trouble, I got to keep them out of trouble, Naruto asked with a frown, I can't even keep me out of trouble. Not that you try very hard, Anko muttered. The smallest one at the game turned around to her and pouted, if I'm going to be in trouble, it might as well be for something I did, he pointed out, sit here, sissy. 
I gots to be responsible and keep you out of trouble. The look on Enko's face was priceless, with only Naruto, and a civilian that would die in a few months due to an unfortunate accident where he fell off a ladder taking down a wall scroll he was going to replace. With one his wife liked better, not savoring the look for years to come and the Hokage regretting for the rest of his life that he missed such a priceless moment as Enko obeyed and let Karinai lift the little kid into her lap, judging by the weight some fell out her chair laughing, it would be a memory used for many times to brighten her days in the future, the look on Karamaru's face when he jumped up, putting his front paws on the table and looked over them at Naruto was almost as amusing, the Inazuka dogs were certainly intelligent but they just didn't think like humans do, in this case. The large hound certainly found something amusing in the sight of Naruto being tended by two women twice his size and more than three times his age. Most likely the idea of a pup being the alpha of a group of bitches more capable of being alphas. Naruto then bounced the back of his head off of Enko's chest and deemed her to be more comfortable than the headrest of the chair. Due to the flirtatious playing Enko was previously doing with Karina I left her a fair bit more sensitive than before, her expression at the impact was far from the smug look she usually had. The next few hands were rather quiet and conservative with no one else dropping out of the game. There was an electricity to the game and it was clear that sooner or later the stakes would be rising rather high, several players went over to the Hokage and gave him IOUs for more chips. Only Aburame Shibi resisting the temptation when he went bust, the hand after Shibi left went down to Koharu and Fugaku. With the former proving to have placed too much faith in two pairs when Fugaku played three queens, taking most of her remaining chips and the permission slip, it seemed likely for his son, Sasuke, to be starting the academy a year earlier than anticipated as Fugaku carefully, or as carefully as his blood alcohol level allowed, folded up the slip and put it into his wallet. One of the civilians, the one who was going to have an unfortunate and easily avoided accident in a few months, looked at his cards before raising the stakes. It was such an awful bluff that the shinobi were almost embarrassed to take advantage of it. Kuroda and Naruto were the only ones to fold straight away and therefore the only ones not to get burned when the merchant demonstrated that he'd been dealt a straight flush and hadn't been bluffing at all. Ranking in enough for his soon-to-come funeral and for his family to rebuild their lives after he passes away. You were lucky once, but will you be lucky again? Choza muttered, not happy about the way this game was going, usually at least one of the Inoshikacho trio came out ahead in these games. Often enough that the one winning would be able to give the other two their stakes back and still be ahead, instead, they were all losing, badly. Dealing the cards out, Choza motioned for the merchant to start the betting this time, he opened high and player after player decided not to risk another big loss betting against him. Hayashi raised the stakes however, rather more than anyone had expected given how conservatively the Hyuga clan leader had been playing all night. Hayashi, are you feeling alright? Fugaku asked with a healthy dose of snark showing he really didn't care for the Hyuga, that is more than you bet in every hand so far tonight. I've got a good feeling about this hand, Hayashi said, staring at Yasuki rather blearily, Inoichi frowned and leaned over to count up the empty bottles on the floor next to Hayashi, there were three, with another on the table, and the rice wine Hayashi enjoyed was rather potent. I'm feeling good too. Naruto declared with a beaming smile on his turn, raising the stakes even higher, causing Karinai to gulp nervously. Yeah! Enko yelled, show em how it is done Master Naruto. You are going to be rich, rich, rich. She was feeling very good and was trying to really get into supporting her new master. By the time that play reached the merchant again, he was looking nervous. Only Hayashi and Naruto were still in the game, and both looked very determined and Naruto had already been awfully lucky so far tonight. He shook his head and threw his cards down face up to display a pair of knaves, too rich for me, he said with a sigh. Hayashi turned his stare to Naruto, let us be men about this, Mr. Uzumaki, he said formally, if a little unsteadily, how much do I have to bet for you to put everything you have on the table? Hayashi, the Hokage said warningly, you don't have as many chips as Naruto, so he has no reason to do that. Fine then, Hayashi said, pushing forward all his chips, I'll bet you all this, and he said, waving a finger dramatically towards Naruto as he paused, getting the other players to lean in a little at what he was going to bet and two Hyuga maidens to balance out the two commoners you got earlier. There was a stunned silence with only Enko being able to notice the commoner comment, while technically true, she still took offense at it for both her and Karinai's sake, before anyone could stop him. Naruto pushed all his chips forwards as well, I'm not betting away my new sisters, he said firmly in a way that was absolutely adorable to the women at the game, Enko hugged him lightly in relief, smiling at someone wanting her, but if you want all this bet, then I am game. 
Right then, Hayashi declared, slapping down his cards, two kings. After a short pause, he fell forwards onto the table. Dang, Inoichi said out loud with a bit of a laugh. He put away quite a few of those bottles, I'd hate to be him in the morning. I wouldn't want to be him either, the Hokage said, that isn't two kings, that isn't even two of a kind, he has one king and the rest of his hand is nothing, he must have been seeing doubles, Naruto, if you have anything, anything at all, then you've beaten him. Naruto shrugged and laid down his cards, three of spades, five of hearts, seven of diamonds, nine of clubs and the ace of spades. There was a single, solitary whistle from the Shiranui clan head, who simply stood and walked away to cash in the chips remaining to him. He'd lost enough already and he'd have a tale to tell his son Genma in the morning about the kid who'd bet a fortune with nothing at all in his hands. Fugaka reached over and picked up the half-empty bottle next to Hayashi's place and poured a measure of the wine before taking a sip to get over the shocks of the last hand, good stuff, he noted. Contemplating getting some himself for a special occasion, he better have his hangover wear off before he gets home, the Hyuga elders are shrill at the best of times. They are going to be in a shrieking fury unless Hayashi can win back that promise of two Hyuga maidens, somehow. He didn't sound all that sympathetic towards the only clan that rivaled the power of Fugaku's clan. Pass the bottle around, Kuroda told him, the Uchiha passed the bottle and each person filled their cup with a measure of the sake, except Naruto. Anko filling up a cup a little before passing it on so Naruto wouldn't have any yet. Two of the civilians picked Hayashi up by shoulders and carried him away from the table, if you can wake him, there's coffee in the kitchen, Choza said, not looking up, and get some water down his throat. I'd not wish facing those whining old women hung over on the QB, Choza got away with saying that for two simple reasons, one, it was clear he meant the actual beast, too. He did not even direct any attention towards Naruto. Are they really that bad? Naruto asked curiously, having heard a few tales of the QB and the fourth Hokage, everyone around the table nodded and Naruto took on a contemplative look, so, next time a giant monster shows up, we should give it a hangover and send the old Hugis at it. There were several snickers and the Hokage smiled again, noticing how no one in the room seemed to see Naruto as the demon anymore, instead. All hatred for him was due to his good fortune in the game and maybe a few of his pranks, and the Hokage figured that they would stop hating his pranks when pulled on others, seeing them for what they were. Childish antics. Shikaku took the next several hands, despite Sum and Inoichi having decent hands, then Naruto won another hand, but Shikaku took the next three hands, looks like you're on a roll, Inoichi said, cracking open another bottle of wine. However, the Nara folded quickly on the next hand and the other players followed, leaving only Naruto and Sum staring at each other over their cards, I'll raise you. Sum began and then paused as Kuramaru bounded half up onto the table and started to yip at her, you sure? She asked the ninja dog and heads turned around the table, what was going on? Had Kuramaru spotted someone cheating or something? But another bark from the dog cut Sum off, are you sure, Kuramaru? More barking, you have a feeling. She looked up and gave Naruto a searching look, well, brat, Kuramaru seems to think you'd give it a good home if you've got the cards to take this hand, so, I'll raise your bet by the pick of the last litter from Kuramaru's mate, several jaws dropped, in some ways it was easier to believe that Hayashi would bet away members of his clan than that the Inazuka would part with one of their precious dogs, of course, if you don't look after the pup, some added, I'll cut you up and feed you to Kuramaru, are we clear? Naruto blinked, um, I guess so, so, are we going to look at cards now? He asked, getting a nod before he turned over his cards, displaying three threes and a joker, setting aside the single knave in his hands, that's four of a kind, right, sissy? Damn right, Anko agreed with a grin, starting to like being called sissy by the brat, if asked. She would later deny it and say she only let him because by the time her good cheer from all his winning left her, he was already in the habit and it would be too big a pain to stop him. She would then threaten anyone else who thought they could call her that, whatcha got, some. The Jonin groaned and threw her cards down, full house, she said with a huff, queens over twos, fuck this for a game of ninja, I'm gonna quit for the night, come by sometime, brat, and we can pick you out a puppy, standing, she walked over to the kitchen and a few minutes later, as Inoichi was busy losing another hand based off overconfidence in a pair of fives, the sound of someone's head being dunked in a bucket of water could be heard. Damn it, Inazuka! Shouted Hayashi from the kitchen and chuckles went around the room. I think Mr. Hyuga has awoken, the Hokage observed mildly, there was a muffled groan and more splashing, and Sung just told him what he lost on the last hand. How can you tell, old man? 
Naruto asked curiously, raking in the handful of chips in the pot. He just tried to drown himself the bucket of water, Naruto, the Hokage explained. Naruto shook his head, you can't tell that from here, he said confidently, I'm going to go see for myself, he hopped down from Anko's lap and grabbed Karinai's hand, come on sis, you play for me. He threw back over his shoulder at Anko who had a somewhat manic look in her eyes as she looked at the mountain of chips that was at her disposal. A minute later, Naruto's voice could be heard in the kitchen, how can he breathe when his face is covered in water like that? He can't, Karinai replied, there was a slight cheer from the table that had nothing to do with her words and everything to do with Anko losing another hand. Shouldn't we do something? He is a grown man, some said without a care, if he wants to kill himself, it is up to him. There was a loud clatter, a splash and then the sound of Hayashi cursing as Naruto intervened to save the man's life, ha, huh, now you don't just owe me two maidens. Naruto said loudly, you owe me your life as well. A pause took place as Hayashi groaned, not liking his fate one bit, what is a maiden anyway? Naruto was looking a little sleepy, Saratobi noted, as he and Hayashi left the kitchen after getting an explanation on what a maiden was, and indeed, yawned loudly as he retook his seat on Enko's lap. The Kunoichi looked nervous but it apparently didn't occur to the boy to see how well, or in this case, how poorly, Enko played on his behalf, it was a decent amount, but Naruto was still way up. Perhaps you should call it a night if you are tired, Naruto, Saratobi suggested, you've done very well after all. Ah, come on, Choza said casually, wanting one more chance at the veritable mountain of chips in front of Naruto, Hayashi is just back in the game, you got to give him a chance to win everything he lost. What does he have left to bet? Some snorted, he bet everything on his last hand, remember? Not quite everything, Hayashi said, scribbling a note and passing it to the Hokage, fair enough. Saratobi carefully read the note and nodded, pulling out several stacks of chips and handing it over after placing the note into the strongbox, don't spend it all in one place, Hokage said, giving Hayashi a disapproving look, thinking of how unusually high the stakes have been getting this night, usually it was only money that was bet, but after Anko bet herself and Karinai, the bets kept getting bigger and other stuff was bet as well, I'll just play one more hand, old man, Naruto said with a nod, I gotta give them a chance, but only one. The Hokage shrugged and watched impassively as Choza dealt the cards out, to a trained observer it was clear that quite a few players saw promise in their hands, Fugaku was first to bet, pushing out a hefty number of chips with the trademark Uchiha smirk on his face, evidently there was going to be a lot of action on this hand. Round the table the betting went out, nobody folding and most players raising, given the number of chips that most had left, the pile in the center soon had more chips than anyone except Naruto. Choza dealt out more cards to those who wanted them and several of the more sober players shivered as Naruto actually discarded a pair of nines, discarded a pair. Fugaka raised the stakes and was followed by the merchant to his left, Shikaku shook his head and dropped his hand, Hayashi put in even more of his chips and the game went around again. It was clear that there weren't enough chips for everyone to stay in the game, and the numbers weren't low enough to call a halt, Inoichi eyed his hand, I'll throw in my Aika Aika collection, he offered, seeing that he didn't have enough chips to keep up all the special collector's editions in full color. You must have quite a hand, Kuroda muttered, okay then, that's good with me, he examined his own cards and then counted his chips, I think I'll keep a few chips back for the next time around, he said. I'll throw in a full field kit of my best kanai, shuriken and senban though, is that good with you lot? There were nods around the table and he pushed forwards as many chips as Inoichi had, along with a note confirming the promise of weapons. Naruto was ginning broadly as he pushed forwards enough chips to stay in, although he didn't raise, which caught the attention of the other players, Naruto had been raising more often than not, so perhaps he wasn't feeling as confident now for some reason, make sure that Naruto doesn't cut himself playing with Kanai if he wins them, the Hokage said quietly to Kurinai, I'm more worried about Enko playing with them, Kurinai replied under her breath, feeling that she could keep Naruto from hurting himself but not as sure about what Anko might do with a full field kit of excellent quality weapons. As the betting continued Fugaku drained the cup of wine by him before he started the next round of betting, since we're all being so creative with our bets, he said thickly with a bit of a slur. I'll wager my heir Sasuke and Itachi. I thought that Itachi was the oldest one, a merchant said, isn't he the heir? Maybe Itachi is actually a girl, Kuroda said, I always thought he was a bit too much of a pretty boy. Wouldn't that make him, er, her a trap? Anko said slyly with a smirk, maybe Naruto is going to win another maid. Nah, a trap is the other way, Some told the younger Kunoichi with a giggle, like, if you were secretly a man, 
Itachi would be a reverse trap. Fugaku pounded his fist on the table, they're me boys, he said loudly, boys. Both of them, boys. In the the CLASSIC hal sench, Hayashi declared, speaking a bit slower to get the words out with a slur, why you can't bet your sons, cause they are not property like your wife and daughters. Oh, that is so getting back to your wives, some snorted as she watched the men at the table nod solemnly, Karinai, Anko and the handful of other players who were of the fairer and deadlier sex. We're also taking note. Naruto snuggled back against Enko's chest. Sissy. Why are girls property and boys aren't? I never heard anything about that. It's a bunch of chauvinistic rubbish, Karinai said. They figure that they're big macho men and that women can't get along without them, but it's them who can't cook or clean for themselves. Why you all say that, Hayashi declared. But how many Hokages were women, eh? Got you there, haven't I lilf lady? That's dumb, Naruto declared. My new sisters are much better than this chauvinist guy, they can kick his butt. Ah! Kurinai said, and knelt to hug him, pressing Naruto's head between Enko and hers chests, Saratobi felt a sudden urge to sit down, and perhaps to take a cold shower, a freezing cold shower. Lucky little bastard, more than one man thought as they saw Naruto be put into a joyous position. Fine, Fugaka declared, if I can't bet my sons, I'll bet my wife. Is that okay with you Hayashi? Oi, Fugaku, you really don't want to do that, Shitsum began to warn with a snort. I bloody well do, Fugaku said angrily, cutting off Tsum's warning, a pity that since the reminder that his wife, Mikoto, was one of the best sword masters in the village and would be able to easily castrate Fugaku with a single cut would have inspired some caution in him, he didn't bother to check his cards. Certain Tsum was just taking the brat's side and shake his confidence, in fact, I'll raise the stakes higher, I'll bet command and control of the military police. Choza fell out of his chair in shock, see command. See control. As in one of us would be able to do what we want with it? He asked as he struggled back to his feet. Fugaku simply nodded. With shaking hands, Choza pushed the chips Fugaku had also wagered back. Betting Mikoto and the military police is enough, if you added chips, no one else could hope to match. There were nods around the table from everyone with Naruto trying to hide his mischievous grin at what pranks he could pull with the entirety or the military police to help him. The players around the table, with the exception of Naruto, began to count up their chips to see if they could stay in. Wow, Naruto softly exclaimed, I've got to win that. Enko smiled softly, hoping that Naruto got something good for the pair he tossed away, she was almost as excited by what could be done with the military police. I don't have soft and soft, uh, enough chips. Hayashi announced with a frown before looking around the table, I'll bet something else, uh ah. Uh. A smile formed on his lips when he saw Naruto, Mr. Yuzuzumaki, he said with a smile, Naruto taking a moment to realize Hayashi meant him, if you promise me you will bet the promise of two Hyuga maidens. A promise between men, I'll bet the Hyuga mansion. Naruto nodded, okay, it's a promise. Fine, someone get me a piece of paper, Hayashi demanded. Some complied and watched as Hayashi wrestled with ink and brush before signing a document that bore little resemblance to the Hyuga's usual careful penmanship, he pushed the chips and the title to the Hyuga mansion over into the middle of the table. Two merchants dropped out, unable to think of anything else to wager, a third offered a package holiday to the beaches of Southern Fire Country, travel, accommodation and food all included, to the winner and his family. Inoichi eyed his cards carefully, he felt good that he could win, but he didn't have much to bet with, he could bet his daughter, his little princess, no. He wasn't going to do that, she was too precious, there was no way he would anger her wife by even betting her, she'd do horrible things to him even if he won, family jutsus were a no-go as well, sighing. Inoichi decided to bet the only thing left, I'll bet the development and organization of a full mental landscape to the winner, flinching slightly, knowing this would be painful, tedious, and make any who go through with it have increased memory, focus, chakra reserves and control, and make it harder for Genjutsu and his family's techniques to be useful on the person. Knowing that was still not enough and that he'd have to add more, he added, and four people of their choice, the bet would be worth it, control of the military police would make his clan stronger. All the money in the middle would also easily make up for the Inoshikacho losses that night. The players looked over to Kuroda, hmm, he muttered to himself, he would never bet his little ten ten, at least, he wouldn't bet her to be a servant, he hand in marriage was a different story. But he doubted anyone would be interested, Naruto was probably the only one that would accept it, not understanding what marriage was, three custom-made weapons, best quality I can produce, chakra channeling metal, 
specialized abilities, the full works, Kuroda said, with a nod, a low whistle came from a few of the players and Enko, Kuroda was one of the best weapon smiths there was. The highest end weapons he could make were almost a match for the legendary seven swordsman's blades. Only reason they weren't as well known was that very few could even afford to buy one and those that did get bought and used were usually designed for stealth and assassination missions. Some of the highest paying missions, not straight combat like the seven swordsman's blades, thus they were less seen and more unknown, and here he was offering three of them. How much have you two drunk? Some asked, knowing the value of such bets nearly exceeded the value of the other bets. Lots and lots, the weaponsmith declared proudly, we can hold our liquor, can't we Inashi? Inashi? Yamanaka Inoichi was face down on the table, ponytail bobbing as he snored. Are his cards face up or face down? Choza asked carefully, face up would mean that Inoichi had dropped out of the game and after his last bet that would be inadvisable to say the least. He at least needed a chance to not help make that many mindscapes. Face down, Kuroda reported after examining the other man's cards for a moment. That's all right then, Chuza said, we can wake him in a minute, well, brat? It's your turn to bet. Naruto nodded, I'm betting the two maidens like I promised, he said. Chuza's face turned red as he realized that accepting the girls as bets meant Naruto didn't have to bet any more chips, especially since no one commented on their value when Hyuga brought it up. Chosa simply sighed, fine then, he said solemnly, I'll bet all this then, he pushed all his remaining chips forwards. I don't think that that's quite enough, Enko pointed out, looking at the number of chips, come on. With all the bets being made you don't really think that Inoichi making mental scapes for you and your family is only worth that pittance? I'll throw in a feast, prepared by my entire clan, for the winner and his family, Chosa said without hesitation, we'll make whatever they want, all you can eat. Deal. Anko and Naruto said immediately and as one, thinking of different foods with a grin. The last merchant pushed his chips forwards and a promise for a complete outfit for the entire household of the winner. Fugaka nodded, I don't think we'll be wanting any more betting after all that, he said with a smug expression on his face, so, let's see who has the best cards, shall we? Hayashi had a superior look as he laid down his cards, all diamonds, the highest a nine, a flush, he said confidently, what are the odds? <laughs> Pretty good, Choza said, laying down his own flush, this one of clubs and queen high, don't worry Hayashi, I'll let you buy back your mansion when you have the cash. Uh, uh, Inoichi disagreed with a shake of his head. Uh, yeah, Choza said, I have a house already. Nope, Inoichi said in a chipper manner as he laid out his cards one by one, I got a flush as well, queen high with my second being her son, a jack. Choza groaned, after his queen, the best he has was a seven, you already have a house as well, why would you want Hayashi's? Lil Ino wants a doll house for her birthday, Inoichi said with a smile, I'm going to give her the whole Hyuga mansion with two Hyuga maidens as dollies. Hayashi left the conversation by beginning to bang his head on the table in frustration, I'm a dead man, he muttered, dead, 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 and when I'm dead, Hizashi is going to kill me all over again. Stop shaking the table, Skikaku said in a bored voice, we'll talk with Inoichi once he sobers up. You won't need to, Fugaku said with a smirk, you see, I got a queen and a jack as well. That isn't worth much on its own, Kuroda said, discarding his hand, unable to beat anything on the table and counting up his chips, sighing in relief that he could buy back his shop from the bank. And that in terms of money, he wasn't too horribly off. How about the queen's sister, flanked by the jack's twin brothers? The Uchiha had asked, revealing his cards to show he did indeed have a full house, jacks over queens, sorry, Hayashi. He added in a very insincere voice, I'd let you buy your mansion back, but we've been looking for some land to build a new prison complex on, and the Hyuga mansion should be just about large enough, plus, with those two Hyuga maidens I just won, we won't have to pay for the cleaners. There was snicker from Anko, followed by high-pitched giggling as she looked Fugaku, you sure about that? She asked between giggles, really, really sure. What do you have, Naruto? Kurinai asked, trying to move around to see what her friend had seen in their owner's hand. Naruto shrugged and put the his cards down, I forget, he said, is this better? They were a joker, ace of hearts, ace of clubs, ace of diamonds, and the ace of spades, a five of a kind, specifically five aces, the best hand in the game able to beat even the well-known royal flush. Hayashi started to cry as Fugaku's face went purple, a heavy presence forming as he unleashed his killing intent, you little bastard. He snapped, scaring Naruto as he rose from his seat, 
Naruto turned around and buried his head into Enko's comforting chest embrace, you cheated. You must have, Saratobi coughed meaningfully, from behind the Uchiha, where no one saw him before, cutting off Fugaku's rant, Fugaku Uchiha, he said smoothly, evenly, a shiver ran down Fugaku's back. I am sure that you are not suggesting that a six-year-old could cheat without being spotted by any of the accomplished ninja at this table, besides, he added, putting a hand on the Uchiha's shoulder. The killing intent dropping quickly, I believe you have more pressing concerns, considering the nature of your losses. Fugaku's face lost all color as he fell back into his chair. Hey, kid, what are you going to do with Hayashi's mansion? Some asked in an amused voice, having found all the suggestions entertaining. The boy gave her a puzzled look, I'm gonna live in it, of course, he told her, not sure why she'd think something else, I don't have to stay in the orphanage now I've got a house of my own. He looked at the crying Hayashi and then hopped down from Enko's lap and trotted around the table to him, don't worry, mister, I won't make you leave unless you're naughty. Saratobi left Choza, who was moving as if in deep shock, to start opening up the bank to cash the players out and walked over to the sleepy, yet victorious, Naruto, you did very well, Naruto, he said. Patting the boy on his head, why don't you go sit with your new sisters while we get packed up? Naruto yawned and wandered back around the table, before he was halfway around, Karinai intercepted him and scooped him up in a hug, well done, Master Naruto. The boy received several jealous looks from the men at the table as he yawned again and rested his head sleepily against Karinai's bosom. Choza heaped the piles of deeds and Ryo up on the table and then counted looked down at the bare table where his chips had been. With a sigh he pulled out half a dozen deeds out of the heap and set them aside. Right, first things first, who wants to buy back their deeds first? Hayashi, you put the hot springs up for half a million Ryo oh, he realized, looking at the paltry chips remaining in front of Hayashi. Tears continued to run down Hayashi's face as he simply pushed over his remaining chips, accepting their value in cash. After counting it carefully he walked over to the bar. I guess there's enough to get me drunk, he muttered, with any luck? drunk enough to forget all about tonight. Panic began to spread amongst the remaining players as they checked their chips against what it would cost to reclaim their property, almost all of them were coming up short, Choza was in the worst position. As he tallied up the stacks of that were in the bank and tried to measure that against the small mountain of chips in front of Naruto, he was terribly tempted to just go over to the bar and join Hayashi. Except that he probably couldn't afford to pay for a bender hell, he didn't have enough cash left to pay for a small shandy. Hokage, he said unsteadily, waving for Saratobi to come back. When the Hokage had arrived, Choza whispered, Hokage, um, Naruto Uzumaki has broken the bank. There isn't enough money to redeem all of his chips. Well I suppose that he'll have to take some of the property then, the Hokage decided, would anyone who can afford to redeem their property come over first, he said out loud. Those who can't will have to work something out with Naruto he looked at the stack of deeds and then at the chips in front of the yawning Naruto, tomorrow, perhaps, Choza. Cash Naruto out a million Ryo for now, he shouldn't need any of it by the time we have the meeting, Anko, give him the chips, then you and Karinai can take him home for some sleep, Karinai. Your apartment is near here, isn't it? He got a nod and smiled softly, I will start sorting this out, we can meet at the Hyuga mansion tomorrow at, let's say, noon to sort things out. I'll also look after Naruto's remaining chips for you and personally count them up. Fine, Choza muttered. He watched sullenly as Enko tucked a sheaf of banknotes into Naruto's frog wallet and then added the various IOUs for all the assets that had been lost to the blonde brat. This is gonna be a nightmare, he groaned, envisaging the likely reaction of his family at losing their control of the stall spaces and possibly half a dozen restaurants to boot, depending on how much cash he could scrape together to buy them out of the bank. You see, Karinai? Enko asked as the trio walked out of the restaurant, Naruto sleeping peacefully in Karinai's arms as the sun rose ahead of them, I told you that it would all work out in the end, and look, we're gonna be living in a mansion. Karinai sighed, a small grin on her lips that she did her best to hide from Enko, I suppose so, but you still sold us into slavery. Finally, the Hokage said with a yawn as he wrote down the total winnings Naruto had accumulated in chips, we really need to stop these reckless bets, it only causes me pains in the head and ass. Sarutobi stood up from behind his desk and stretched, moaning in slight pain as he felt the hours of sitting in his chair, counting chips, catching up with him, looking out of the window in his office. The old man, god of shinobi, Hiruzen Sarutobi saw that the sun was up and shining, but he still had a few hours till the meeting at the still current Hyuga mansion. Turning around and popping his head out of his office, he saw his secretary sitting there at her desk, 
Mind getting me a strong cup of tea and cancelling any appointments I have today? I have a meeting at noon at the Huga Mansion to deal with the fallout of last night's game. Yes sir, the secretary said with a nod, writing down the note to cancel the appointments, luckily very few with it being the middle of the week and the day after a poker game. The staff always learns quickly to keep the day after the poker games light to make schedule changes easier. Sun and her canine companion were nervously having breakfast with Kiba, Hannah, and the Heimer brothers, Hannah's ninja dog companions, Kiba was oblivious to the tension, happily eating away. But Hannah was staring at her mother, knowing something was wrong, while her companions stared down Karamaru. Mom, what did you lose? Hannah said in a firm voice, not liking the nervousness her mother, the alpha of the clan, was showing this morning, and knowing where she was last night. Well, uh, Sun began, sounding less confident than she meant to, I only lost a bit of money, not that much, really, Hannah just stared at her mom, Kiba, having paid attention to the conversation, looked at his mom as well, not liking the way she was being looked at, some sighed and continued, Karamaru, however, convinced me to wager one of the pups his mate will be having soon, Hannah blinked at that response and shrugged, she knew full well what that meant, but it wasn't the worst thing that could be lost, that it? She asked, going back to her food, yeah, some sighed, am I still going to get my puppy? Kiba asked, his eyes wide and pleading as he looked at his mom. Sun just rolled her eyes, don't worry, all this means is you get second pick instead of first, and I'll see if the brat will let you have first pick, Kiba smiled and went back to breakfast. Happy with what the situation turned out to be and certain his mom could get him the first pick back, she was so strong and scary, how could she fail? Brat? Hannah asked, curious about the term her mother used for the person that won the puppy. Yeah, we had a few new players, Sun said, going back to her food, feeling a reprieve from her immediate family and hoping the rest of her family was as understanding. One of them was that Naruto is a Maki kid, kid has some crazy good luck, got multiple four of a kinds and finished the night with five aces, Sun looked up at Hannah and a grin grew on her lips, hey, Hannah. No, Hannah said without waiting for the question. Sun pouted, you didn't even wait to hear what I was going to ask. You wanted me to break the news of your loss to the clan. Hannah said flatly, actually, that is a good idea, some admitted to herself, but I was actually going to ask if you'd be willing to trade teaching the Naruto brat how to properly take care of a dog in exchange for your brother, getting first pick, why me? Hannah asked, ignoring the pleading look her brother was sending her way, you are focusing on veterinary care and won't be leaving the village much, so in your downtime you can teach him and make sure he won't do anything stupid, some said happy to have found a way to protect the pup and keep from hearing Kiba whine. You are still telling the clan about how you lost one of the pups, Hannah said, agreeing and getting a smile from Kiba. Damn, some said, not wanting to have to tell the clan that. The Heimara triplets meanwhile were laughing at Karamaru's soon-to-be misfortune. Kuroda was asleep on his couch where a friendly, neighborhood umbu dropped him off, he was not needed for the meeting at noon and a note had been left on his coffee table explaining what he had promised Naruto along with what little money he had not lost and the deed to his shop. A little girl with brown hair shaped into a pair of Chinese-style buns was sitting behind the register, in order to help her uncle run his store. She usually helped out the day after he goes to play the not-pointy or explodey game he sometimes goes to play. She liked helping because she got to spend time around all the pretty sharp things he made and he usually taught her about how to play with the sharp things and occasionally how to play with explosions. He always said that he was teaching her to be safe and what to do if she faced it after she leaves the academy she would be entering soon. Shibi Aburame was at his clan compound enjoying a meal and explaining his perspective of the previous evening's festivities to the rest of the clan. The words used were carefully chosen so the maximum amount of information would be shared in the least amount of time. By the time he would leave to help the Hokage mediate the discussion on Naruto's winnings at noon. The entire clan would know with precision what occurred and would carefully spread the truth to counteract the rumors. The logic of the clan put the majority on the side of Naruto with the only dissent coming from those pointing out that Naruto was too young and lacks any official decree that he is an adult in spite of his age. The dissent was quickly silenced when it was pointed out that it was in many ways an officially unofficial council meeting and the councilmen, women, and the Hokage all let Naruto play. The Aburame conclusion, in order for no one to have committed a crime, Naruto was to be an adult in the eyes of the law from now on, the Aburame would subtly help him adjust to sudden adulthood. Anko Mitarashi was happy waking up this morning, it was so rare for her to wake up feeling another in her arms and her sensitive areas being rubbed, lightly moaning and coming out of a dream involving Karinai. 
slave costumes, candy, a guy that must have had a horse in his ancestry, and the smell of the color pink, Anko's eyes fluttered open to see where she was. Her slow thoughts were, definitely not my bed, too soft and comfy, so, not my bedroom, Karina's face is peacefully sleeping there, maybe I should wake her with a kiss, sheets have vines with roses on them. So Karina's bed, don't let her know this isn't the first time I've been in her room, perhaps I had my wicked way with her, what happened last night? Oh, yeah, the poker game, must have won a lot and we had a victory celebration, feels like someone is rubbing their face in my chest, if Kure threesome? Kinky, oh yeah, people got bet, maybe I won someone, let's see who it is. Anko looked down with a dreary smile on her lips that froze and turned to a look of fear as she looked down at a mop of short blonde hair, shit, she muttered, causing Kurinai to stir awake. Hokage will have my head mounted and my ass on a plate if he thinks I'm doing anything inappropriate with the brat master brat's stupid Orochimaru, getting a rep for pedophilia. I know you lack anything close to a sex drive unless it'd give you more power. And Anko? Kurinai muttered, watch me do ohain. She moaned. And nothing, Anko answered nervously as she used all of her kunoichi training to switch her chest with a pillow under Naruto's head and her body out of his possessive arms. She really needed to see about reviewing certain aspects of kunoichi training if it took all her training as it is to get out of the grips of an untrained, six-year-old child's grip. Safely out of Naruto's grip she went to help Kurinai get out of the bed as well, somehow, Naruto's leg got in between Kurinai's and was very high up, exciting Kurinai a bit. Anko helped Kurinai lift her leg up and carefully move Naruto's leg off the other, brat, master, whatever, is going to be a menace to society in a few years, Anko mumbled to herself. Kurinai still too out of it to hear it. Kurinai was not much of a morning person when able to relax at home without caffeine. Kurinai safely out of their new master's limbs, Anko began to look around the bedroom, confirming her earlier suspicions that it was Kurinai's room with the red curtains. White comforter with green vines and red roses all over it and the matching silk sheets, spotting her skirt on the doorknob, Anko quickly grabbed it and slipped it on, no need to flash the brat, master. Master brat, Anko really need to get used to that, not that this was all bad, she had a master before, a right bastard of a master, but a master. And the feeling of liberation of not needing to make the big decisions was all right with her. Oh, and Kurinai agreed to servants' outfits, Anko knew just the thing and it would be perfectly acceptable for going out in public, at least by Anko's standards, all she'd need is to talk Master Naruto. Starting to get used to it and then get a tailor to work on it, Anko giggled, this is there already is a tailor that is going to make outfits for us, free clothes. And dressing up Kurinai in servants' outfits, Anko's giggling got stronger, stirring Naruto a bit from sleep. Hmm old man, we having HN fish ramen? MHH smells fresh, Naruto sleepily said. Already giggling, Anko lost all remaining control at that comment from her new master and fell on her rump hard, laughing out loud, waking up Kurinai fully, Anko? What are you doing? I had the strangest dream, Naruto rolled over and snuggled up into his new sister, Anko, that was a dream, right? You didn't lose me in a game of poker and then molest me in front of half the council, did you? There's some completely innocent reason that there is a six-year-old in my bed and that there are wet patches on my sheets, right? No dream, Anko began answering perkily, I did lose and molest you, we just slept with the brat that still sounds bad, anyways, the wet patches can be blamed on me, they aren't all mine, but I'll accept it. Kurinai simply glared at Anko. The umbu sent to check up on the players that stayed at the bar shook his head at seeing the depressing sight and pulled out the memo from the Hokage with instructions when he comes across certain individuals. Stepping up to the Inoshikacho trio, the umbu made his presence known, Excuse me sirs, but you are required for a meeting at the Hyuga Mansion. I would advise you to take these tablets to help sober yourselves up. The umbu handed the three small black pills made of a special mixture of herbs, sealing and special charcoal that would help clear out the alcohol in their systems. After the trio took their pills and took a seat to sober up, the umbu added, you may want to hurry and leave to the Hugas, I saw Yoshino coming this way and she was looking upset about something. What a drag, Shikaku said, getting up and leading the trio in fleeing the area as quietly and stealthily they could, taking a path to the Hugas that misses the three shortest routes from the Nara household and the bar they were at. The umbu went over to a slumped over for a Fugaku Uchiha and nudged him awake, wake up Chief Uchiha, the umbu said. The smile in his voice at knowing Fugaku wasn't going to have that position long unnoticed by anyone due to no one being sober enough to pick up on it. HN, Fugaku grunted looking at the umbu with what was clearly a hangover pill and a glass of water. 
Get up, sir, you have a busy day ahead of you, the umbu said, showing some sympathy by keeping his voice down, you need to be at the Hyuga mansion at noon for a meeting with the Hokage, bring your wife. Fugaku shot standing up, aggravating his headache, his Sharingan spinning at full speed for a moment, but when it stopped, his red eyes had a three-point star that curved inwards from start point to star point and the pupil of the eye was a red dot in the center of the star, the feeling of loss of his life's works, his wife, and the general feeling of utter defeat had upgraded his Sharingan into the Mangekyo Sharingan, Fugaku began his walk home, a dazed look on his face, and the hope he could get a suicidal mission from the Hokage, or that someone would just go ahead and stab him in the back. Uh, sir, the umbu said, nervously, Fugaku turned to the umbu, his Sharingan still very visible in its evolved form, your eyes, the umbu pointed out to Fugaku, pointing towards a small, decorative mirror nearby, Fugaku lightly touched underneath his eyes and smiled softly, sadly. Even this small victory of achieving the Mangekyo without someone close to him dying could make all he did lose worth it. Naruto didn't want to wake up, wherever he was sleeping was warm, with a softer bed and covers than he'd ever experienced before in his entire short life and he felt safe, protected. If this was a dream then he never ever wanted to leave it, he'd rather stay in blissful sleep than leave this dream. Master Naruto whispered a voice close to his ear, a voice that sounded familiar, but it was too much hassle to remember where from, he rather keep sleeping than try to remember. Instead he burrowed down under the covers into the warm, comforting embrace. Wake up, Master Naruto, the voice said again and a finger poked gently against his cheek. He opened his eyes reluctantly and saw a pair of red eyes staring down at him from a pretty face that he had only seen properly last night. Sis. Good morning, Master Naruto, Karinai told him, did you sleep well? Naruto blinked, it wasn't a dream. I've really got sisters. Yay! He shouted and jumped right out of the bed and onto Kurinai, who staggered backwards under the unexpected impact. Barely getting her arms around Naruto to stop him falling to the floor, Sis Curry he said happily, rubbing his cheek against hers and giving her a nickname that only would make sense to someone too young to fully speak the language. Enko stood in the doorway and chuckled at the way Kurinai's eyebrows were twitching, getting all maternal already, Curry? Enko asked, deciding to adopt her master's nickname for her friend. The smirk was wiped off her face as Kurinai pried Naruto off her and held him out towards Anko, give Anki a hug too, Naruto, she told him and Naruto quickly complied. Anko froze as she felt the little boy wrap his arms around her neck and he had to hang by his arms for a moment before the Kunoichi closed her arms around him. Taking a lot of care not touch him anywhere that the old man might object to, she didn't really give a damn about what most people thought. But the Hokage had taken a chance on her after her last master was caught messing around with babies and she wasn't going to screw that up, if that meant she had to play wet nurse to a brat. She'd find some way to start lactating, speaking of questionable medical procedures involving balls, where was Tsunade? It'd be useful to know that if she would need such a complex surgery, in a casino far from Kanoha, Tsunade, the blonde-haired, huge bald medic, was losing money, her apprentice, the black hair, kind-faced Shizun, was trying to convince her to stop, and Taunton, their pearl-wearing pig, was eating a truffle she found, if Tsunade or Shizun had paid attention to the cute little piggy, they would have seen it was a rare white truffle worth Tsunade's cup size of pure gold, sadly, they were too focused on the money Tsunade was losing to pay attention to the snacking pig, Hayashi Hyuga was having a horrible morning, he was hungover because the Hyuga don't keep anything to help with hangovers because that is beneath them, number one reason he hated being a Hyuga at the moment. Number two was that it was Hanabi's nanny's day off, and Hayashi couldn't find anyone to take care of her for the day. A one-year-old was not what Hayashi needed when he had a headache and had a meeting coming up that would make the Hyuga elders upset. Today, sucked for Hayashi, especially with that annoying pounding, wait, that isn't his head, that's the sound of flesh hitting wood, following the sound, Hayashi came across his nephew training. Hanabi's fussing made Niji pause and turn towards the source. Ah, Niji, would you mind looking after your cousin today? Hayashi said in a way that Niji knew he couldn't refuse, I have a meeting at noon and need to get ready for it. Niji gave a nod, withholding his anger at the situation, as he came over to take Hanabi from his uncle, yes uncle, I'll make sure Hanabi is taken care of. Back at Karinai's home, the only three that were at the previous night's poker game and came out without any concerns were having a healthy breakfast. Despite a very brief complaints from both Enko and Naruto who wanted Dango and Ramen, respectively, Karinai's argument was simple and effective. She wouldn't be living there much longer and didn't want to just waste the food she already bought. 
So, Naruto, why are you calling us your sisters? Enko asked, teasingly, we are your servants so you should be calling us things like, slave, bye, Enko. Kurinai quickly intercepted what she knew what Enko was about to say and didn't want to have cursing around a kid so young. I've always wanted a family, Naruto said with big pleading eyes, looking at the two Kunoichi and missing the near swearing, not that it would have been a bad influence on him, he's heard worse. Hearing the sweet comment made the two women, trained to kill in cold blood with no mercy, coo softly and pull their master and unofficial little brother into a hug. Naruto was happy and felt very safe and protected in the embrace of the two women and was beginning to associate his head in women's balls to safety, something most guys associate with either danger or pleasure. Danzo, the old crippled man, was currently spending the day as he usually does, making sure Kanoha thrived, currently, he was doing so by reading over reports. The rumors of what had happened the previous night only just beginning to spread around town, so he had no idea how much he had truly missed and what he could have had the chance to win, most likely lose. Considering the frightening luck Naruto displayed which Danzo had made a note to check to see if that luck was some sort of natural thing, or if it was merely a fluke, if it proved consistent. Danzo would have a new theory of how the balance of luck truly worked and that all of Tsunade's good luck went to a different, much younger, blonde, none of this is really important and the theory is wrong. Tsunade just sucks at gambling. The Hokage was on his third cup of triple strength tea, one of the secret blessings the Hokage had for being so old was that he lost a lot of his sense of taste and could swallow things most others would find. Too bitter or powerful, the blessing is all the caffeine he was able to get into his system to keep him going. Contrary to some belief, the Hokage does not have any mind-altering drugs in his pipe tobacco, instead, he has a specially ordered blend of tobacco from the hidden grass village, Kyuzagakir. That was soaked in caffeine to further help him keep going, the Hokage was on his fourth refill of his pipe. The messages for various factions, including the bank to pull up the accounts of the players who had not been able to redeem their stakes, have been written and sent out. Now all he had to do was gather the paperwork and head over to the Hyuga mansion. Fugaku arrived home, his eyes back to black, Itachi was away on a mission and shouldn't be home for another week and Sasuke was already at a tutor's, minimizing who he had to inform the bad news to, sadly. His wife was sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of tea already made and her blade sitting next to her place, she wasn't looking pleased when Fugaku stepped into the room. She wasn't actually pissed about anything in particular, she just felt the desire to be pampered a bit. Seeing the way Fugaku flinch made her believe he had forgotten something and would give in to the pampering. Fugaku swallowed before opening his mouth to speak, I guess you heard, he said, thinking she had somehow found out about how he had lost her in the poker game. He wasn't as concerned about her being angry about the loss of the military police, but he felt sure he'd soon be running to protect his manhood. Heard what, dear? Mikoto asked in a far too sweet voice, alarms were going off in her herd and she was beginning to get pissed, if he cheated on her after all her loyalty, she'd get him like a fish. That I, uh, lost you in last night's game? Fugaku said very quickly and flinching, he had some advice on women he hoped he'd be able to tell his sons, namely, don't go for Kunoichi above Chunin rank. They get too frightening at such ranks. What was that? Mikoto asked, having easily broken down what her husband said, but wanting to be sure she heard right. The betting got pretty high last night. Fugaku started explaining in fear, feeling the killing intent coming from his wife in full force, the Hyuga mansion was on stakes. Along with probably the biggest pot of the last few years, a few people, custom weaponry, among other things, in order to match the bet I had bet both you and the military police. Mikoto's eye twitched and began reaching for her blade, who did you lose me to? Your answer will determine how much I cut off, she said, pulling her tonto from its sheath. The Uzumaki brat, Fugaku said, backing up and trying his best to remember what her feelings for the demon child were, praying they were positive for some reason. Mikoto smiled lightly, knowing Naruto was the child of her dearly departed friend, you get a three-second head start, Mikoto said, being required to take care of her friend's child was not a bad thing. But her dear husband wasn't getting away unpunished. Brat, I think we should probably get going, Enko said after making sure that only the brat and Karinai saw her go all girly with Naruto's comment about wanting family. She felt comfortable giving anyone that thought to harm her new master and little brother a rusty kanai colonoscopy, and would just stab them if there was any doubt about her being the toughest meanest. Okay sissy Anki, Naruto said, stopping Enko's train of thought. Kurinai had a small smile as she saw the way Enko froze at her nickname, yeah, sissy, let's get going, she teased with a laugh as she picked up Naruto and started off towards the Hyugas. 
Knowing they needed to get there soon if they were going to be on time, best to teach Naruto early to be on time so he didn't end up like a certain someone. Strolling along a path back to the village, a day late and still a day away, a man, with the only distinctive features being his silver hair, his forehead protector covering one eye, and the fact he had a mask coving the lower portion of his face, yawned as he read from a vibrant orange-colored book, the poor bastard didn't realize how different his village would be by the time he arrived. Most of the people from the previous night were currently in the Hyuga meeting room, notable exceptions was the weapon smith, the only civilian that was still asleep, the rest not wanting to miss the action. Naruto and his first pair of servants, Fugaku Uchiha and his wife, and Hayashi Hyuga. Hayashi was in a private meeting with the elders of the Hyuga clan and a few other important Hyugas, both branch family members and main house members. All of them were in their formal robes and seated on the floor of the side meeting room on their knees, looking very formal and serious. The fact that no one had pupils and it was hard to make out where any of them were looking made everything more serious. Thank you all for coming on such short notice, Hayashi began, bowing low in a show of servitude, causing a few eyebrows to raise, an acceptable show of emotion for the Hyuga. I have called this meeting to discuss some changes that will be happening due to losses of the poker game last night. The air suddenly felt as though it dropped a few degrees and Hayashi felt even more nervous, even though he did not show it at all, go on, one of the elders ordered frostily. Let me begin by saying that Anko Mitarashi and Naruto Izumaki joined in the game last night with Anko bringing Karina Yuhi as a guest, Hayashi said, causing several unraised eyebrows to raise now, Anko. At one point, when she was low on money decided to bet herself and Karina, Mr. Uzumaki, with his damnable luck, won them. The rest of the Hyugas remained silent, waiting for Hayashi to get to the point that affects them, many of them noticing the term of respect Hayashi used for Naruto. That was the first of the interesting bets that night and pretty much set a precedence for including interesting bets, especially as we drank more. One of the elders held up a hand to stop Hayashi from going on, what exactly did you lose? The elder asked, not wanting this to be dragged on longer than need be. Hayashi sighed, all my losses were to Mr. Uzumaki, I lost two Hyuga maidens, the mansion, and I had put up the hot spring as collateral in hopes of getting my losses back, if we can get half a million Ryu, we can buy back the hot spring. Silence followed Hayashi's statement, Hayashi took a deep breath in to add in another point, my daughter Hinata will of course be one of the two maidens, but I ask that Hanabi not if for no other reason than she is only one year old, Hayashi was bowed over, his head on the floor, waiting for the verdict. After a pause, one of the women of the main branch chose to speak up, I will nominate my daughter if the caged bird seal is not applied to her, the woman said. Thinking of her sweet little girl who was currently going to be married off to one of the branch house men and become little more than a maid, housewife, and slave. She'd rather see her as a slave and maid of the demon brat, but unbranded and free of the caged bird seal than to see her still in the family and branded with that accursed seal. Many of those in the room turned to the woman and Hayashi showed a small, but thankful, smile, thank you, I will do my best to make sure Koharu is treated well, Hayashi said, not wanting anything to happen to his own daughter and feeling it was the least he could do to make sure that another put in such a position is treated just as well. With that, the Hyuga meeting was called to an end, Hayashi began to head towards the main meeting room, his spirits high, when he heard a little girl's scream, wait, that was too powerful to be a little girl. Must be a man afraid for his manhood, Hayashi smirked as he shook his head and went to open the front gate for Fugaku and his wife. We. Oui. Fasta sissy. Fasta. Naruto yelled happily as he rode on Enko's shoulders as she ran along rooftops. The snake bitch of Kanoha was smiling as well as she kept a grip on Naruto's legs to make sure he stayed on her shoulders. Kurinai was only thinking about how one of them was going to be a horrible influence on the other, and she had no idea which one would be the worse influence. Thankfully, she could be the mature one of the group, hopefully she'll be a good influence on the two. Enko suddenly stopped on a roof near the Hyuga compound, look master brat, your new home, she said, Glad that Naruto was alright with being called a brat, as long as she called him master first. Naruto smiled wide, looking at the mansion, bouncing on Enko's shoulders, all of that is mine. Naruto asked cheerfully. Yes, Kurinai said, a soft smile on her lips at knowing she wouldn't have to worry about rent again, and after this meeting we can go to the orphanage and get your things. Naruto pouted at the thought of going back to the orphanage, do we have to? Naruto asked, can't I just enjoy what I got and not go back? Enko sighed, knowing where the kid was coming from, not wanting to go back to the orphanage herself, I'll watch the kid while you get his things, she offered, looking at Kurinai in a way that left no room for argument, 
All right, but we have a meeting to get to first, Karinai said, jumping off the building and walking towards the gates in front of the Hyuga mansion. Anko following with Naruto smiling like the happy little kid he was. Walking up to the front gate, the Kunoichi were slightly surprised to see the gate open until they saw a Hyuga with his eyes active bowing at the gate, Welcome, follow me to the meeting, he said in a crisp tone. Naruto did not notice the tension leave the trained warrior he was riding on as she realized that it was just a Hyuga seeing through walls, choosing to just smile his friendly smile at the Hyuga. Trying to shrink down and hide behind Enko's head, Kurinai noticed Naruto's reaction and smiled at him while reaching up to stroke his hair to comfort him, Naruto relaxed a bit and smiled at Kurinai. Waiting in the meeting room, the Hokage sat doing some last-minute organization of the papers he had, he simply figured it would be best to go through the list in order of who were able to pay back first. Then those less likely, Hayashi Hyuga sat to the side of the Hokage to show that this was still his home, the other side of the Hokage, in the spot of importance, was empty and waiting for Naruto and his girls. Next to Naruto's place was Mikoto with her hand on her sword where it was stabbed into the floor between Fugaka's legs. Fugaka's eyes were still wide in fear and the knowledge that he was being forced to pay for the damage and that the floor would end up costing a lot. The rest of the council was around the table, waiting, some patiently, some nervously, all wanting to know what would result of Naruto's winnings, a few planning on selling the information to others. Everyone looked up when the door opened to see Naruto, Anko, and Kurinai come in, walking over to the empty spot at the head of the table that the Hokage was motioning them to. The door was quietly closed behind them. Sit, sissy, Naruto said with a smile, causing a few chuckles and Enko to get an eye twitch. Why you brat? She asked, forgetting to call him master for the moment. I was told I have to sit on you to keep you out of trouble, Naruto said with a wide smile, making some howl out in laughter, rolling on the ground, knowing it was her suggestion that the kid was remembering. Shikaku lazily hit Sum to get her to stop, knowing it was less of a bother to snap her out of her laughter now than to wait for her to finish and pay attention. Bastard. Sum replied, sitting up and getting ready to attack Shikaku right back. Sit Sum and we can begin this meeting, Saratobi said in a serious tone and waited for everyone to be seated and comfy before starting, okay, as we all should know. This meeting is to discuss how those who lost in last night's game will repay their losses to those who made out like bandits. A pause was made as many of them looked towards the youngest person in the room in his stained shirt as he squirmed uncomfortably in Anko's lap, his head in between her balls and his head being petted by one of the scariest people in the village. Anyways, I got a copy of the current amount in the personal account of the ninja that played last night and did not buy back their stakes, the Hokage began. What? Fugaku yelled, starting to stand until the feel of the blade between his legs pressed against his crotch, making him sit down with a light, cold sweat. It is a legal thing the Hokage may do when it comes to the ninja in his service, Shibi Aburame said in his monotonous voice, he cannot access the funds, but he may deposit money into our accounts. Pull up the current balance, and check our balance history. Several of the shinobi gaped their mouths at Shibi, not having known that, he is correct, that has been in place since the first Hokage for black ops and to look for traitors in the forces. The Hokage said with a nod, any of you that disagree with that can bring it up during an actual council meeting, Seeing no arguments, Saratobi continued on. Let us start with someone that did not bank any properties, Fugaku Uchiha. Everyone paused to look at Fugaku as he cowered from his wife's glare. You bet your wife and command and control of the military police and lost both to Naruto Uzumaki, Mikoto, would you mind removing your sword from between Fugaku's legs now? Anko, Naruto, and some each snickered at the question, the Kunoichi showing they had the maturity on the level of a six-year-old prankster. Mikoto rolled her eyes as she pulled the blade out of the floor and moved to sit closer to Naruto who reached out to hug Mikoto. Mikoto allowed herself to be hugged and everyone got a shock at Naruto's first words to her, even those that should have expected it, I got a mommy now. Naruto said happily as he buried his head into Mikoto's chest. Right, anyways, Fugaku, since the military police is under my purview, even if it is independent organization. I am going to have you be Naruto's second in command until such a time he can be trusted to take over full control, essentially. You will be doing the day-to-day -day operations and teaching Naruto to take over for you. The smirk on the Hokage's lips showed that he knew this was just further punishment on Fugaku and that he was going to enjoy the whole Fugaku dug himself. Fugaku merely groaned in reply and set his head on the table, as Naruto let go of his hug and went back to sitting in Enko's lap, reminding her again he was supposed to keep her out of trouble, making her pout. Next is a request of Tsum about the conditions of her loss. Tsum, you have the table. 
the Hokage said before looking at Naruto to make sure he was paying attention. Thank you Hokage, Tsung began before looking at Naruto, I know I promised you pick of the litter, but I was wondering if I could trade that for the second pick and training from my daughter in how to care of the puppy. Naruto took on a thoughtful look and turned to Kurinai, the one he recognized as being the responsible one, Sis Curry, what do you think? He asked, not sure. Kurinai simply shrugged, well, it's not like you'd know which is the best pup anyways, so go for it. Naruto smiled as he turned to Tsum and nodded his agreement. Tsum muttered under her breath that the brat's luck would probably still get him the best puppy, but at least her own brat will be happy. The next few were civilian losses and setting up when Naruto would come to redeem them. It was decided that the outfits would be ordered in a few days and the vacation would be in a month so those going could enjoy the beaches during summer. And then came the ninjas that put up properties into the bank. Let's begin with Choza, the Hokage said, having his information next in the stack anyways, you put up half a dozen restaurants up for a million ryo, according to your current balance. You lack the funds to buy all of them back. You do have enough to buy back five, or you can save some of your money and buy back less. Whatever you do not buy will be put up for the rest gathered to purchase with Naruto having first pick. Why does the brat get first pick? One of the civilians asked loudly. Simple, Mr. Uzumaki was the one to break the bank, this meeting is in part to be able to pay all of Mr. Uzumaki's winnings, Shibi said with Sarutobi nodding. Chose a side and looked at the restaurants he had put up, choosing to not take back the one that was currently not doing so well, it was a bit out of the way and was actually not a restaurant, but a cafe and bakery that came from far away, at least my sweet, delicate wife won't hurt me since I got back her favorite places to eat, Chose muttered as Inoichi patted his shoulder. As a reminder, you do owe an all-you-can-eat style feast for Naruto and his new family and Naruto already has the deeds to the stalls you bet as well, Saratobi said in a calm tone. A light smile on his lips at seeing how everyone seemed to be respecting Naruto, even if it wasn't in the way the fourth Hokage wanted him to be, when would be a good time for this to be done? He asked both parties. Naruto talked with his new mother and sisters, his voice loud, but everyone not in the conversation pretending not to be listening in. A few of those gathered when he mentioned the nice ramen man and his daughter were like family and he wanted them to come so he can give them one of those stall thingies and Saratobi felt a swell of pride that. Naruto mentioned he was like a grandfather to the boy and wanted him to come too. How does the Saturday after this one sound? Choza asked, pulling out his planner and seeing there was nothing planned for then, you should have your new clothes by then. And that will give us time to discuss the menu. At the women's urging Naruto nodded his agreement. Let's see, next is Inoichi, the Hokage said, causing the blonde-haired man to sit straighter, you lost the creation mindscapes to Naruto and four of his choosing, your Ika Ika collection. I'll be looking after those till he is old enough, Enko interrupted, a bit of drool hanging out of her mouth at the thought of reading them. And I'll be looking after them till you are responsible enough, Enko, Kurinai said, hitting Enko lightly on the head, with Mikoto being the secondary one to keep an eye on them, Mikoto smirked to herself not admitting she would read them herself. Why don't I get them now? Naruto asked with a pout. They are adult literature, the Hokage said, don't worry, you'll get them when you are an adult yourself, I'll even see if I can get the writer to sign them for you, anyways. How about we take a short break to get something to eat? I'm sure all this talking has gotten a few of us hungry, we will reconvene in an hour. Naruto nodded his agreement, not noticing the way the Hokage skillfully changed the subject so that Naruto wouldn't complain about not getting his new books. Naruto was happy to be getting things and felt that this was the best day of his life. With a general murmuring of agreement from around the table, everyone got up and headed out to find something to eat, Hayashi lead the Hokage, his soon-to-be landlord, and his soon-to-be landlord's servants to the dining hall for their meal. The meal was a rather simple affair of white rice, broiled cod, steamed veggies, and green tea to drink, Kurinai was thankful for the food, Mikoto and Saratobi were respectful in getting their servings. Enko complained about how bland the food was and why the brat still had to sit on her lap. Naruto reminded her that it was so she wouldn't cause trouble like he was told. Enko groaned and dropped her head while the others at the table held back their laughter. Naruto ate all his food, just happy to being fed twice in one day. While they were eating, Koharu came in and bowed before Hayashi and Naruto, having gotten an explanation of the situation from her mother, and was happy to not get that seal she had seen used on others placed onto herself. Naruto, I would like to introduce you to Koharu, one of the two maidens I lost to you, Hayashi said in a calm voice, indicating the girl that was three years older than Naruto. She has been taught how to take care of a household and how to behave in a proper manner for a maid, 
treat her well and you will undoubtedly have a maid for life. Kohara smiled kindly at hearing the head of her family show such concern for her. Why would I treat her bad? Naruto asked, old man always told me to treat others fairly. Hayashi and Mikoto looked at Naruto with a strange look. Knowing the sorts of pranks he did, the Hokage just sighed and put his head into his hand, Anko snickered. Understanding exactly why Naruto did his pranks, Kurinai just rolled her eyes and hoped that the two of them could be controlled somehow. Thank you master, Kohara said, is there anything I can do for you, master? Naruto started to shake his head, but Kurinai interrupted, yes, if it isn't too much, would you go get Naruto's things from the orphanage? Especially his files. I'll get right on that, Kohara said, bowing again to Naruto before exiting the room to do just that. Naruto yawned and snuggled up to Enko's body, his head resting peacefully on her balls, sissy comfy, he mumbled aloud, getting smiles from everyone except Enko, who instead pouted. The petting of his napping head proved she wasn't truly upset. Naruto was still happily napping with his head on Enko's chest as everyone gathered back into the meeting hall to continue the discussions, deciding to just go through, as quietly as possible. Through those that put up properties into the bank, most of those gathered were happy to find the brat wasn't going to be buying a bunch of properties, making him some sort of one-man merchant guild that controlled half the shops in Kanoha, instead. He'd have first buy at a fair number of stores and locations and had a chance to actually set himself up to have a pretty easy life as a civilian, although, considering he was a boy that was going to be surrounded by ninjas, a very cool sounding job, he'd probably still end up at least training in some of the ninja arts, and none of them planned on stopping him. The fact that he was going to be surrounded by kunoichi that could be extremely frightening had nothing to do with it at all. Nope, not at all. Okay, that was the entire reason, if Naruto had only one money and properties, or even civilian girls. Then there would be a conspiracy to block Naruto from entering the academy and sabotage his education if he still got in, him having three kunoichi. The lowest rank being known for putting people into illusions that make a person taste fear, hear pink, smell music, see pain, and feel cheese. A horrible thing that was now used occasionally as a torture by the torture and investigation, or TI, department when they were just assigned to torture someone. Kept the majority from planning to go against Naruto and try to advise others and not to either. Anyways, most of the rest of the properties were handled, Hayashi being able to buy back the hot springs he had put up, after Shibi calculated out how much was still owed from the bank to Naruto. Shibi was pleased to announce that Naruto only had to buy one property for the bank to pay out his remaining balance. That would mean that all the others with chips remaining would have to buy properties to recoup their chips, however. This announcement brought forth an argument that woke Naruto up, he pulled on Enko's coat, nearly showing off more than was decent, in order to get her attention, Sissy, what's going on? He asked sleepily. Enko and Kurinai had been in a hushed conversation during the arguing over what would be best for Naruto, and them by extension, when pulled out of the conversation. Enko decided to go with her gut on what to do, say you'll buy the extra properties Naruto, she said with a smile. I'll buy the extra properties. He said in a confused and sleepy voice. Enko just looked at the Hokage who gave her a disapproving look, even though he thought the suggestion would be best, the way Enko got him to go with it was not something he approved of her doing. Are you sure Naruto? The Hokage asked in a concerned voice, wanting confirmation before going through with it. If Sissy thinks it is a good idea, then sure, Naruto yawned as he nodded his head into Enko's ball, closing his eyes again. Lucky bastard, the Hokage thought, not for the first time that day, turning his attention to the rest of the table, he silenced everyone with a secret technique he only taught to a select few. The big head jutsu was just the right combination of random and sudden to generally silence a room full of people but could not be overused or it would lose its effect, applying the technique. The Hokage yelled at everyone to shut up before he discussed what Naruto had just woken briefly to agree to, that left a few pouting, the rest would soon join the pouting, if they were not too prideful. As the paperwork came out that had to be filled, signed, and sent out, in triplicate, the Hokage glad that all he had to do to make the forms official was to apply a stamp that he had brought with him. It filled that dark evil place in his heart to watch others suffer the wrath of paperwork.